Hello everyone, my name is Alec and I want to welcome you to the fourth part of the Hero's Journey series. Last time, I left you all in a sort of a cliffhanger. I hinted at the ordeal, but we didn't get to it. Today, we will cover stages 8 and 9, the ordeal and the reward. These two moments are the antechamber to the climax of the story, and if the first threshold mark where a hero couldn't go back to the ordinary world, the ordeal is a threshold where a hero cannot go back or they will perish, and they will not be able to continue in the story. As I mentioned, this is not the climax or the final boss or the final challenge, but it is the last test before the final showdown. Of all the tests the hero has faced, none have made them hit rock bottom. Until now, Vogler describes this phase as a black moment. Campbell refers to it as the belly of the whale. Both indicate some grim news for the hero. This is also a good opportunity to humanize our hero. If during this story the heroes have presented themselves as fearless, resolved, and overpowered, here is where they can take a major hit. This is where hidden flaws, doubts, insecurities, imperfections come to light and the hero must triumph in spite of those characteristics. Like I mentioned, a story is only as good as its characters. If your hero is too perfect, the story won't be good. This is a critical moment in the story, as Vogler explains, that will inform every decision that the hero makes from this point forward. Depending on the type of story that you're writing, the whale or the ordeal can look a bit different. Since we're working with a personal story, this stage can include loss personal or material, a major confrontation between characters, the breakup of a friendship or relationship, or any event that makes the hero stop and ponder if they can continue on with the adventure. In popular culture, this is usually signaled by the grey rain of depression or other ambient cues that indicate sadness, loss, or grief. Picture Emperor Cusco crying under the rain in the middle of the jungle in the Emperor's new groove. One key element of this stage, however, is that the hero must emerge stronger on the other side. They either receive help from their allies, their friends, or their mentors, or they find this inner reserve of strength that they didn't know they possessed in the first place. Maybe they will come up with a solution for their problems, or just decide to go on and face the music even if they're unsure of the outcome. The ordeal is sometimes not the climax of the story, there's more to come, but you can think of it as the main event of the second act, the one in which the hero actually earns the title of hero. As the clouds clear up, the sun rises and the tides recede, our hero sees a light at the end of the tunnel and the choice seems clear. They must go on. If the inmost cave and the ordeal were an actual cave or they happened in an actual cave, they'll probably emerge from it with some sort of treasure or sword or talisman or another physical object that can help them defeat the enemy. Their reward is the object or knowledge the hero has fought throughout the entire journey to hold. If the ordeal was a grueling training montage like in Rocky, the reward will be that our hero is now stronger, both physically and emotionally. In The Hobbit, the reward is both physical and abstract. Bilbo gets hold of the Arkenstone, but he also realizes many things about the dwarves and about himself. There is a noticeable shift in his character before and after facing Smog. Where there was doubt, there is now a resolve. The long march to face the enemy begins and the second act is concluded. When talking about my own journey, I hinted last time that my ordeal or the belly of the whale included loss and sadness. Well, now it is time to reveal what happened. As I mentioned before, during the approach to the inmost cave, I realized that I had to make a change or things would not go well for me. I also got the feeling that maybe working so many hours and sacrificing other aspects of my life for the money I was making may be not worth it. I noticed that my hobbies, my family, and my own mental health were being sacrificed for the sake of a paycheck. Around that time, I also got an offer to edit a book about children's rights as a freelancer. Editing and writing were things that I had always wanted to do, much more so than teaching at the kind of institution that I was working for back then. I also wanted to focus on my own interests and aspirations, and I felt that I was missing out on family reunions, spending time with my friends, and doing things that I enjoyed in general. However, it would probably have taken me much longer to take the steps if something critical had not happened on October 6th of that year. It was a Friday around 2.45 p.m. and I was wrapping up the school day after having a particularly lousy week. I was putting my things away at the school cafeteria when I noticed that I had received a message from my cousin. 
this was odd because she rarely messaged me, and much less so in the middle of the day. How are you doing? It read. I'm great, and you? I replied, a bit confused. Have they not told you? She wrote. I froze as I headed to the door. Our grandfather died. My head was spinning as I stood there in the middle of the cafeteria with children playing on the tables and teachers gossiping around me. I didn't have a cell phone back then. All I had was an iPod, so I couldn't even make a phone call to see what was going on. I babbled at someone if I could borrow their phone because my granddad had died. I dialed my dad's number with shaking fingers and as he picked up, I demanded to know why they hadn't sent me a message. He briefly explained the situation and I decided that I would drive back to Tecate. I wanted to be with my family. I drove to Tecate and I stayed there until late at night with my family. We were reminiscing and coping with grief in our own way. I called my boss to see if someone could take over my class that I had to teach on Saturday morning. He said that I had to be there at 9 a.m. I finally got to my apartment at 2 a.m. or so. I had to be teaching a class in just a few hours. And after that, I had to drive home for the services. My grandfather had been one of the most important figures in my life, one of my steadfast allies and the best role models I've had. I was truly in the belly of the whale. My reward from this ordeal was the resolve to quit my job and take the editing gig where I would be doing something for a bigger cause than just a paycheck. I had been unsure whether I would risk not having a stable income to pursue my own goals. Now the choice was clear. Considering where I am right now and the person that I have become, this act of my story was without a doubt defining. It was a difficult and trying time, but the lessons I learned and the things I realized have made me stronger and just a bit wiser. This was only half of the fight though. I may have made my choice, but I still needed to actually quit my job and deal with the consequences of my decisions. Naturally, this will have to wait until next week when we tackle act three of the hero's journey. I feel that each video ends with a sadder note than the previous one, but I think that's just part of storytelling. And um, I can promise you that things do come around. So thank you for watching. Remember that the sources and materials are linked in the description and that you can post any questions or thoughts in the comments below. Have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next class.